All right, I'm on the phone with Maine Maritime men's head basketball coach David Munchnik and coach. Uh, a, a good weekend and for the final weekend. You you end up splitting, going one on one, and uh, tell us about the weekend and I guess where you go from here. Yeah, well, uh, last uh, Wednesday uh, we had a uh, a great senior night, uh, obviously honoring uh, Zach Radcliffe and Brian Goda one more time as as seniors leaving the program and um, you know we're, we're graduating. They they don't they wouldn't leave the program, but um, uh, and as soon as we uh, started the game, we uh, we played with a, a tremendous amount of energy. We uh, jumped out to uh, big leads right away, uh, seventeen to two, I believe, and we were up thirty at halftime and ended up beating Farmington by thirty five. And uh, uh, as uh, convincing of a win uh, as this program has had, especially here at home and inside Smith Gymnasium uh, in quite some time. And it was uh, great to see. And our guys uh, not only uh, played, uh, you know, played uh, the way we were supposed to play early on, but, but kept uh, kept it going, you know, kept extending the lead and, and weren't satisfied with, with just having a lead, but uh, but continuing to build on it. And that was, that was great to see. And then Saturday at Thomas, you know, they're a very good team. Uh, fourth seed in, in our conference tournament. Uh, they won last night, so they're in the semifinals uh, this weekend. And uh, when they shoot the basketball the way they did against us, uh, they're they're very tough to beat. So um, and that'll be a, a good matchup on uh, Friday night between them and and Hudson, uh for the semifinals of our of our conference tournament. But you know, overall, Chris, you know, we've we've spoke about it numerous times this year. Uh, you know, we're very close in a lot of regard. Uh, you know, nine games this year, I believe uh, that we. Uh, we were we lost by six or less, uh, and then four of those games, uh, you know, we had shot to uh, tie or, or win it at the buzzer. Uh, so we're you know we're right there in a, in a number of different areas, uh, but at the same time, you know, we had our wrap up wrap up meeting with our guys yesterday, and you know we just spoke about how much further we have to go with with everything we're doing uh, in order to get to where we want to be, and and that's playing on the final weekend of the conference tournament and having a chance to, to cut down some nets uh, and, and go on to the NCAA tournament. So, um, you know, I think we're on the path to getting there. I like where we're, where we're going, the progress we're making, and, and the fact that, uh, you know, we've got good people in our program, good guys that do the right thing and, and act the right way. And uh, and certainly this off season, uh, leading into next next fall, is uh, is a big six or seven months for where this program is going to go and how quickly we can get there. So I guess I mean obviously you've got new recruits coming in, um, but it's tough to imp- be that impact player in your first year. Uh, you you've lost two seniors. I mean you're expecting a lot from. Your uh, this year's freshman class and uh, sophomore class and and, and junior class uh, the the three remaining classes there at at Maine Maritime. Yeah, no question. You know, it's freshmen are always going to have an adjustment period. Uh, the number one thing that that's always different uh, from the high school game to the college game is uh, the level of physicality, uh, the speed of the game, the speed and intensity of the practices, uh, the, the, the mental side of things with scouting and, and um, you know, mental toughness of, of this discipline of, of the consistency of coming to work every day in practice and, and, and individual workouts and film and lifting and, and all those things that we ask our guys to do, you know, aside from, from the academics, which is obviously a given. Um, but uh, you know the the incoming freshman next year we like a lot. Uh, it gives us some some versatility and and uh, a little bit more depth in some spots that we didn't have this year. Uh, we still have about 15 recruits that are accepted right now that are still making final decisions. That we hope to get a couple more of those uh, to add to the five that are committed to us next year. But you know more than that, I mean, and we talk to our guys a lot about. You know, recruiting because you know I think there's a little little bit of nervousness right now um, on the team in terms of this is really our first full recruiting class that we're bringing in uh, that'll be freshmen next year and and the guys know how talented that that some of these guys are and you know so they're all obviously a little little worried about you know what their role might be next year and how sure. those freshmen might be able to you know maybe take uh, some of their minutes away and and that's to me. You know, obviously that's a good problem to have, and I, I like that because I 
one of my core principles, one of my, my strongest beliefs is that competition breeds success. And, and the more competition we have, uh, the more, uh, you know, motivated that those individuals that want to be here are going to be to either build upon what they've done this year or, or the last two years in their career. Um, and uh, knowing that they want to try to catch people ahead of them and, and then people are, are kind of nipping at their tail from behind. And, um, but at the same time, the freshmen have to know that they're going to become us and, and it, we're not uh, going to become them in the sense that we're, you know, we're not going to change things around necessarily to, you know, for the freshmen. The freshmen are going to see what we're doing and this is what we do and this is how we act and this is who we are and, and they're going to have to fit in with, with who we are and what we do. Um, and more on the, uh, the off the court stuff and the, the work ethic and the, and the, um, you know, and the and the, the uh, consistency and all that uh, than anything else. But you know, bottom line is, I like where we are. Is uh, you know, in the program progression right now. Obviously, we'd like to be further ahead, but I do think we're moving in the right direction. And and I'm super excited for for next year to begin. Uh, obviously, I'd like to take a little time off and relax a little bit and and catch my breath. But certainly, uh, you know, the recruiting class we're putting together, I think, has a chance to be really good. I really, really like the returning guys that we have coming back for next year and and I think that the way the conference is uh, is kind of shaping up with a lot of the upperclassmen uh, that have uh, that are going to be winning first team and second team all conference awards here in the next couple days uh, they're all going to be gone in a month or two and and the the, the conference is really going to be changing here in the next year or two and, and I think we've got a really good shot of making some headway if uh, if we continue on with this progression what's the one thing that your team needs for, to be successful next year Oh man, that's a great question. I think I think two things. I think I think a a a a. a, a Oh, man, I, I was gonna say quiet confidence, but there's nothing about me that's ever quiet. So you know, I, I think I think it's a confidence of of okay, we're in a close situation, we're in a close game, and and we're going to pull this out, and and uh, and it's not going to be a mentality of oh, you know, we're waiting for the other shoe to drop, or we're waiting for another team to make a run, or we're waiting for ourselves to make a mistake. I think the mental side of things, the the mental aspect of what I'd like is is that confidence of we've been here before, we know what to do we know how we're going to get it done let's go out there and do it um, and I think we got better at that as the season has gone on and I think you kind of have to with as many close games as we've been in uh, but that's something for next year and hopefully with those especially you know guys like Brendan Newcomb and Tyler Thayer that are that are going to be juniors next year so they've had two years in the program they're up there on career minutes played already in two years I mean those guys I, I can't take them off the floor most of the time uh, and they've been in so many situations that they're going to have that confidence of have been being through all the, the close games that they've been through over the last two years. Dylan Price is another guy that's done that. Um, you know, Dylan Stevens and Tyler Gilson have, again have played a lot of minutes. They're going to be seniors next year as well for us. Uh, from a physical side of like what the program needs from a from a skill perspective, I, I think we need one or two more guys that that can that can consistently put the ball in the basket uh, from from anywhere on the court. I, I'm I was a shooter in college. Uh, you know, Jaron, uh, my assistant was a, was an offensive player. Brian Shawley, my assistant from last year, was was the landmark conference in the Mid Atlantic region. He was the all time leading three point shooter in in conference history. I mean, we we know offense and we know <laughs> how to put the ball in the basket and and I think what what's hurt us a little bit this year was our defense was so good at times and sometimes our offense would kind of let down our defense and we go through three four even five minute stretches where we had trouble scoring and it was just that three or four minute segment that would that would sink us in the end and um, I think uh, with what we have coming in again for next year with our guys moving forward of what we're bringing back and what their skill set is I think um, you know offense is going to be certainly uh, something that uh, they're going to continue to focus on and continue to work on for uh, you know for next year but uh, guys that can consistently put the ball in the basket shooters that can stretch the floor you know obviously making the the layups and free throws around the rim and around the paint uh, that we uh, you know we need to do and just making teams pay for for mistakes on our end so um, you know, I know that's a long-winded answer to your question. You should be used to it from me by now. But, <laughs> uh, but certainly, I think that quiet, that, that that confidence on the mental aspect, and just a little bit.
bit more offensive consistency and, and being able to, to shoot the ball a little bit better next year, which I think will uh, open up some things on, uh, you know, on both sides of the floor for us because I think our defense would be even better if, if our offense was a little bit more uh, successful. And uh, I think we'll, we'll, be, we'll be fine. I'm looking forward to next year already, like I said, and, uh, and I think we're in, the, in a good spot. And, and uh, I think next year is, uh, is certainly going to be the, the year that we take a, a big step forward in, in both the conference and, and certainly uh, moving things forward to, to getting closer to, to getting into the NCAA tournament. All right, Coach, I thank you very much for your time. This, uh, well, I guess back since October we've been doing this. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it, you've, you've allowed us uh, into the program, and we appreciate all your insights and uh, a chance for, for you to uh, get your message out and to reach uh, alumni and uh, potential recruits. And uh, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you next, uh, next fall. Yeah, and thank you, Chris, for all your hard work with us this year, and and thanks to Car uh, Dealership as well for for their you know sponsorship and their support, and and uh, the listeners, uh, whoever they may be out there, and uh, just uh, it's been great to, to talk to you again uh, this year, and hopefully we could do it next year as well. Sounds good. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Chris. Thanks.